Mr. Kramer, along with a number of other individuals, including multiple co-defendants who have also been charged with bribe, which is now joined in this case, literally brought themselves to a location where they knew that individuals uh, were going to be with the intent of provoking a confrontation. The state has videos that have been provided to the defense of the lead up before any confrontation occurred, before they even arrived at the side of riot. And in those videos, you can see that the defendant is making statements about uh, needing to get over there. You can see that he's talking about the weapons he has. You can see that he has uh, some sort of mace, as well as an aspatown out prior to even getting to the location. He's wearing protective goggles and some sort of a respirator or mask to protect. He's talking about the cops, not that they're not going to do anything. He's noting, look at what the look at what they've done to Brown boys around the country. And then when other folks ask, when is Joey Gibson going to get here so we have more numbers? The defendant Ian Kramer states very clearly in the video that uh, Mr. Gibson's numbers aren't what's important. And then he knows who's the guy with the weapons here, referring to himself. He went there that day intent to fight. Uh, he went there knowing that there would be a confrontation and he's a risk to the community. I didn't know who Ian Kramer was until someone sent me a video of him hitting me from behind in the back of the neck with a baton. I was unarmed and unmasked. This was the person that delivered the blow that made me think for a moment I was either dying or at the very least paralyzed. He's been known to commit acts of violence against unarmed women. A simple Google search will tell you that. Uh, this is just the first time it's come to light in a legal setting. There are clearly no lines to be drawn by this person. By releasing him, it would actively be putting other people in danger. History tells us that angry men being held accountable for their actions equals violence, and this is no exception. He changed his profile pictures on social media to images of texts quoted by the recent mass shooter of the Garlic Festival. His Twitter handle is Lone Wolf Action which tells me that he's preparing to take drastic and violent measures on his own accord. But since the state has insisted on uh, relaying some of what they believe the facts of this case are, I, I also have seen the video in this case. And if we're going to be fair uh, about this, before the alleged Measure 11 Charge Act occurred, clearly on the video, Ms. Clark is running in running across the street into a crowd of people that are associated with my client with her fists swinging. It, in all fairness, if we want to talk about what the video shows, what the state says it shows, let them deny that the video shows what Ms. Clark was doing. So we disagree that that she is she feels that she that she is in some kind of danger from my client. My client, if he's released, is going to stay steer clear of her and anyone else involved in these demonstrations, Your Honor. I believe, uh, Mr. Steen, that your client at this time presents a clear and present danger to the community. I also believe that he's convicted, he will go to prison, and there will not be a probation offer on this matter. Uh, given those circumstances, there's an increased flight risk, and I'm not going to release him.